On tonight's show, we have five ways to make soccer better. We have the NBA free agent frenzy and MLB midseason review. Where's my face coming at you? Round ones of all time, of all sports, ever. Think though, Beverly Hills Cop, Robocop crossover needs to happen. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Words From My Face. My name is Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. You. And we are the one and only home of the Chewbacca Chainsaws. Yeah, and you do choreograph that. I was joking last time, but I know you do. You sit there and practice, like, make sure my eyeball moves side to side, perfect timing. You do that, don't you? Don't you? Admit it! I told you. All the listeners. 30% of the day, 70% of the night. There you go, there you go. But so, like we said in the intro, tonight's show we have coming at you five ways to make soccer better, at least for us Americans here. Then we have the NBA Free Agent Frenzy and MLB Midseason Review. But we're going to start it off this week with a little bit of a double treat for you because we have two, count them, one, two Whoa. Chewbacca Chainsaw Awards to give away. Now, one of them is going to be on the good side and one of them is going to be on the bad side. I say we let Brendan start it off with the good Chewbacca chains. All right, today I'm going to give you a Chewbacca chainsaw, and that's, that's going to go to Super Mario Gotze from Germany, the guy that essentially won the World Cup. Now, you might say it was a team sport, and obviously things went back and forth, but who cares? He made the only goal. He did. All right. He's, he, he made, and it was a spectacular goal. Not taking anything away from that. It was a spectacular no, goal. Honestly, that, that was, even as not a soccer fan, I could appreciate that goal, and bigger soccer fans could really appreciate it because, you, know, you know, the ball comes in from the outside, hits it with his chest, and before he hits the ground, you know, he jumps up in the air, hits it with his chest, before he hits the ground, hits it with the side of his foot, and goes straight to the far end of the goal. Now, you saw the goalie was right there. He was on the near side of the goal because he says that's where the ball's coming. That's exactly what he's supposed to do. He did everything right, except for the guy hit this perfect ball out of nowhere unexpectedly. Hits it to the far end of the goal, not only the far end of the goal, but if you saw, it went straight into the side of the net, not hitting the back of the net, but that side net area because it was just... Straight it was a good there. goal. Definitely, place. you could put it up there with goal of the tournament. I wouldn't argue yeah. that at all. It was an amazing goal, and it came at the best time for them yep. when they did Last it the most. Last couple minutes of the game, of, of second overtime of the game. Uh, well, second and half of the in. first overtime. They don't, they don't really have a second overtime. Yeah, they did. They had two overtimes. You have two halves for the overtime. What? what overtime. Overtime. It's overtime. Overtime two, Okay. Okay, overtime, overtime two. two. Overtime, overtime two. two. <laughs> he did it in overtime two. All right, I won't argue that. I won't argue that. So last two minutes, overtime two. Okay, that's how it goes. So Get let's give him his while. Chewbacca chainsaw award. All right. <laughs> didn't want to give it to him, did you? You're like, I don't know. He got it, okay? He got all it, all right? He got it, he he got got it, it. with the truth. He got it. Well, that moves it on to me, and I'm going to go to the more negative side of things and give away the Chewbacca Should Chainsaw Award. And that goes to Adam Wainwright. Now, re just this past Monday was the All-Star Game, the Midsummer Classic, and everybody knows now, over the past couple of years, at least since uh, about seven years ago, they had a little bit of a fiasco where they just ended the game at, in like 12 or 13 innings, um, and nobody won. And so they wanted to make it have some purpose from then on. So whoever wins this game actually gets home field advantage for their league. So American League versus National League. And Adam Wainwright, he's pitching the ball, right? Derek Jeter comes up to play. Now, Derek Jeter... This will be his last All-Star appearance. He is retiring at the end of this year. So Adam Wainwright, to be a nice guy, 
because he respected what Derek Jeter did for the game, kind of threw him a couple softies. Derek Jeter then gets a hit, gets on base. I believe he got on second base. And then the next hitter up, Mike Trout, goes ahead and hits a home run, pretty much put the American League up, and they never looked back. Now, I'm not giving him the award for giving him some softballs to Derek Jeter because I think that's actually a pretty cool thing. That was an upstanding thing to do. He's a legend. He's one of the best players ever. So hats off to you on that. I'm going to give you the Chewbacca Chainsaw, should Chainsaw Award, because he, he then went to reporters and blabbed about it, saying, yeah, yeah, I gave him a couple easy pitches. Oh, well, uh, you know, I probably shouldn't have done that, hindsight being 2020. <laughs> and that's because he plays for the St. Louis Cardinals. And there's a very, very good shot that they will be in the championship game this year. So he might have cost his team home field advantage, and then went and told everybody that he did it. So you're getting my Chewbacca should Chainsaw Award of the week. I don't know if it's a award. It might not really be an award, because an award is something you generally want to get. I don't know if anybody wants to get chainsawed by Chewbacca. Yeah, but it's like the uh, the, the Razzies, you know, the Razzie Awards. It's Yeah, but new. nobody really wants to win those. I know. It doesn't mean, but it's an award. <laughs> It's the worst award ever, that's all I'm going to say. If you're like, sweet, I won a Razzie, or I won a Chewbacca should chainsaw me. Yeah, that's, mm, don't brag about it. Be, learn the lesson Adam Wainwright did not learn. Just keep your mouth shut about it. Be like, oh, okay, it happened. Try and, try and act like it didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, do your best. Do your best, at least, because yeah, it's kind of painful. And, I mean, I don't know if you've ever seen an eight-foot Wookiee with a chainsaw. Most people haven't. He's kind of like Bigfoot. Doesn't really pop up that often. But it's a vicious sight. I mean, well, that's the thing of nightmares for years to come. Years to come. If you and, get years to come after seeing that. Well, yeah, most people don't live after seeing it. So, but, but so, those are our Chewbacca Chainsaw Awards of the week. And yeah, you're welcome for giving you two. Because I just wanted to give you a bad one. Brendan here wanted to give a good one. So, mm. yeah. And for that, we get another. <laughs> You can never have too many Chewbacca chainsaws. <laughs> never have too many. And people don't realize when we were doing the beta version of this show, as we like to call it, um, I think the first time we discovered the Chewbacca chainsaw sound effect, we probably did it, what, like 50 times in the first episode? We did it more. Pretty much most of the episode was us talking about <laughs> Chewbacca and doing the Chewbacca chainsaw. <laughs> it was just like a constant chainsaw going through. So I uh, really, I never get tired of it. It's just one of those things. Someday we'll dig that up for the, the stuff of legends, you know, stuff the, the legend. origins of the Chewbacca Chainsaw. <laughs> They'll be like, where did that come from? Hmm. Words from my face. Eh? Eh? Ah, okay. But yeah, let's let's jump into the meaty part of the show, and let's talk about, uh, let's talk about movies. I'm just kidding. Let's talk about some sports. And the first sport I want to talk about tonight is actually the free agency frenzy going on in the NBA right now. Because, like I said last week, everything was kind of clogged up. The, the tubes were not flowing properly in, in the free agent market because you had the big names. You had LeBron James and Carmelo Anthony as the biggest culprits. And then you had the, the little lesser ones like uh, Chris Bosh and the ilk of players of that ilk. Um, not really making any decision because everybody was waiting to see where LeBron's going to go. All the teams were waiting to see where LeBron and Melo were going to go because if they were potentially going to attract them to their team, they were going to give them enormous amounts of money and take themselves out of the free agent market. But Cleveland actually was lucky, landed LeBron James, and no surprise here, Carmelo Anthony decided to stay with the big bucks and stayed in New York. So those two players are off the market. Let's get into some of the best players that signed after that. Uh, we'll start it off with Luol Deng. Really good shooting, uh, small forward, formerly of the Cleveland Cavaliers last year and the Chicago Bulls. Really na made his name with the Chicago Bulls. Very good defender, very serviceable shooter. Uh, yeah, he can probably score about 18, 19 points a game will be his average. That's about his limit, but he'll get you a good, like, three steals. Well, maybe not three steals a game, but maybe one and a half average and and some good rebounds. So a solid 18, player. 18, 19's not, not too shabby. No, it's, that'll put you up in the top 30 score, highest scoring players. So that's, that's a pretty good one. Um, now, he landed with the Heat to compliment Dwayne Wade. And Chris Bosh actually re-signed with the Heat to taking all the money and deciding, eh, you know what, it's Miami. 
why do I need to go anywhere? So wait, did he just go from Cleveland to the Heat? Kinda. I mean, he was kind of traded. LeBron James there. They kind of tagged each other on their way past. <laughs> yeah, yeah they're, they're like, hey man, I want to go where it's warmer. Hey man, I want to go go where it's cold. And there's nothing else to do. Can you guess which one I'm talking about for which city? <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah, they they kind of did high five on the way through. So Luol Deng uh, landed there as LeBron James's replacement. Now, of course. You can't really replace LeBron James. It it just doesn't happen. But if you had to have a replacement come in, they picked a pretty good one with Luol Deng. Now, I'm sure they would have preferred like Carmelo Anthony or something, but again, not going to happen. So I think he, he did a pretty good job there. Another kind of surprise, I didn't really see this coming, uh, was Paul Gasol landed with Chicago. Now, this really takes Chicago as already a perennial contender well, that's assuming Derrick Rose will be healthy. I think right now that they'd be considered the strongest team in the East with, with the addition of Paul Gasol. Now, this all hinges on Derrick Rose staying healthy, and I don't think that's that's might have happened like two of his like six years in the league so far. So, And as a Washington Wizards fan, I'm totally cool with you being hurt, Derrick Rose. Now, I want you to play well. He's actually going to be playing for uh, the American World Cup basketball team, so I want him to play well. I want him to be healthy. But after that, I want you just to fall off. American World Cup basketball team? Yeah, we're going to win. That's what we're going to do. They have World Cups and everything. World Cup of Rugby, World Cup of Basketball. They need to get some better names, okay? They need to to (laughs) switch them up. They need to be a little more original, like the World Championship Series. Actually, I think that's already taken by the NBA Finals. They call that the World Championships, so I don't know. But yeah, there are God. World Championship stuff. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, I, I, Man, I it's already the that. Olympics. I mean, basketball's already in the Olympics, so what, yeah. what difference does all this make anymore? What? Mm-hmm. Not not really any. <laughs> so, But, yeah, so then you have Chandler Parsons, who... I thought this was kind of a surprise. I thought he fit in very well in Houston. He decided to uproot himself, move himself across the state, and he signed with the Dallas Mavericks. And so to replace him, uh, the Houston Rockets then signed Trevor Ariza, which I didn't quite understand this move by Trevor Ariza. He was offered a four-year, $32 million deal by the Washington Wizards, which is a team he fit in great. He had one of his best – he had his best year of his career with the Wizards, and he's been in the league for almost eight, nine – probably 10 years. And why you would want to leave a system that seemed to be doing so well for you and go to another system that, you know, you never know, kind of didn't make any sense because he signed for the exact same contract, four-year, $32 million, that the Wizards offered him. But Houston, apparently in Texas, you don't have an income tax, so you get to keep all your money. Well, I guess that's, that, that is something. That's pretty probably pretty significant for him. Um, yeah, so. I mean, I know, Brian, you're hurting now because you were counting on him coming back. Yeah, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Somehow. Unless you think that it frees up some room for, for someone else. <laughs> we'll get into that a little bit later. <laughs> it's interesting. So moving down the list of free agents, uh, DJ Augustine, very good score, signed with Detroit. Vince Carter, yeah, he's still in the league. I think he might have been in the league. I think he was drafted in 97, so he's... He's a dinosaur in basketball years. He decided to move from Dallas to Memphis, which I think he'll fit in pretty well there. Then you have Kyle Lowry deciding to stay in Toronto. Dabo Cephalosha, probably one of the second or third tier free agents, but he's another small forward that really got backed up in that log jam of Carmelo and, and LeBron. He decided to go to Atlanta. And Lance Stevenson, Mr. I'll blow in LeBron's ear, uh, decided to uproot himself from the number one seed in the East, the Pacers, and go to Charlotte. And when you see this face, it's not because I don't remember where he went. It's just because, like, I'm baffled, and it almost gives me a headache to think, yeah, they made the playoffs last year, but they're, I mean, they might make it this year, but, I mean, they're not a good team. I mean, why would you want to leave one of the better teams in the league they're where they were going to give you more money, game. more years to take less years <laughs> and less money for a bad team. And less chances to blow in LeBron James's ear. Oh, he'll probably still have the same amount of chances, actually, to do that because they're still in the same conference. I think they're in the same division Maybe now. Maybe they'll have more chances. Maybe that's the whole thing. 
Ah, he wants to blow ah. LeBron James' ear some more. He was, he was going to miss that ear blow. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, I, I think a little bit had to do with Michael Jordan owning the Charlotte Bobcats, or Hornets now they're going to be called. They dropped the really? Bobcats. Michael Jordan owns them, them now? Yeah, he's... Because he's, he's, he's he used to own the, for the Wizards. For a while, he, he owned was, the Wizards. Then he, he was, was a president. minority stake, and he was team president. And then they said, hey, Mike, why don't you come and play for us? We still think you have enough in you. Don't worry. Your spot will be here when you're ready to retire from the Wizards. He played two good years, two great years. I, I loved seeing him in a Wizards uniform. And then was like, okay, guys, I'm ready to take back over where I left off. And they said, mm -mm, get out of town. Leave and never return. That's like <laughs> so, the worst, worst trick ever. Yeah. Like, hey, man, why don't you like make our team good for a little while? to boost its value, and uh, they get a go away. Just, yeah. just go away. <laughs> and then leave now and never come. Ah, we took your shares and your success. <laughs> I could see April and, like, Mr. Burns, <laughs> you know, sitting there, just being the mani maniacal person. Actually, A. Pullen was a great guy, so I'm not going to hate on it. But, yeah, so that brings us he around like to the Wizards. North He's from... He, he played uh, college in North Carolina anyway. I think he might be from North Carolina, right? So might maybe he'd like that anyway. So, but um, Whatever. so that brings us to the last free agent of the big free agents on my list, and that is Paul Pierce. Uh, now I mentioned I wasn't too disappointed with Trevor Ariza leaving, and that is because the Wizards got a steal, probably the steal so far of the free agency. Okay, maybe not, because LeBron James is the steal. No matter how much you pay him, he's if you could get him away from Miami, he's the steal of the free agents. Um, but Paul Pierce. Not a big drop-off in, in points scored. I mean, he's going to roughly average about the same amount of points Trevor Reese averaged. Uh, defense, you do have a drop-off. Now, it is a good thing because you have a young player like Otto Porter being able to step off the bench, get more playing time that he wouldn't have gotten if Trezor, Trevor Reese had stayed. But the best thing about it was they signed him to a two-year, $10 million contract. So he's going to get about $5.3 million a year. And absolutely. The perfect thing about doing this, I mean, literally, I, I didn't think Ernie Grumfeld had it in him. The genius move is that in 2016, when a lot of money is going to come off the books, guess who's going to be a free agent? Hmm. Hmm. Kevin Durant! Yes, that is right. So I'm hoping that they're going to try to lure him back home because he is from the D.C. area, similar to what Cleveland did with uh, LeBron. And, and until uh, then, Brian's just buying his time. You know, just the next two years of basketball is all about just waiting for Kevin Durant. Mm -hmm. Waiting for Kevin Durant. That's true. I did read a Stephen A. Smith article about how Kevin Durant said if he was going to ever leave Oklahoma City, he was the only other place he'd go is Washington. So kind of what well, my pants that, uh, that That's long. a pretty good sign. Yeah, and Stephen A. Smith two years ago kind of predicted that LeBron was going to jump ship and go back home to Cleveland. So I'm going to go with Stephen A. Smith and say, Kevin Durant, come on back. And so this is going to start our marathon of Kevin Durant's rants every week, even if he does nothing from now until he comes. And then after he comes, it's going to be double that. I don't know if you guys like Kevin Durant as much as I do. And I don't know how I'm going to double up on Kevin Durant rants. But I will. I will do it. The Durant rant will live. Let's start it off with the first one. Uh, Durant uh, is just an amazing player. Uh, he's a handsome gentleman. Um, he gets all the ladies. Uh, he is the best football recruiter ever. He recruited Deshaun Jackson to the Redskins. Uh, he's a humanitarian. Uh, when... When there was a big tornado rip through Oklahoma, you donated a million dollars right after that. He's probably one of the best public speakers of all the NBA players. You should see his MVP uh, acceptance speech. It just brought a tear to my eye. I mean, probably the best public speaking I've ever seen out of an NBA player. Um, he's humble. And did I mention he's the best scorer in the game right now? And he can be extra humble because Brian's just going to do all the uh, the bragging for him. So it's, Yes, it's I... Right. I K KD, if you if you want, I will do it for free for you. I will be your publicist, and anything that comes out, I'll just be like, Kevin Durant's the best. What do you want? <laughs> that, that that he doesn't have to. Well, he don't. He doesn't need you as a publicist for that because you're just going to do it anyway. Like, <laughs> true, true. Uh, but it'd be nice to be acknowledged. I will not be ignored. No, I'm not. I'm joking. I will not be a crazy fatal attraction. Um, <laughs> I, I so will, you say? 
I won't. I won't. I promise, KD, if you ever move to the area, I will not stalk you. I will not find out where you live and park outside your house for hours at a time just hoping to get a glimpse of you. Unless you really want him to. I mean, if you really want me to, I, I'll do it. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm not saying I won't do it. Uh, I, I will do it, Katie. If that's what you want, man, that's what you get. So come on home, Katie. So let's talk a little bit about, though, some of the best free agents still available. Now, it's kind of a weak market still out there, um, but I'll just talk about some of the best ones out there. Ray Allen, he's still available. Uh, he's probably teetering on the edge of whether he should retire or come back, but the guy can still shoot threes, so any team that's really in need of a three-point shooter should go ahead and get Ray Allen services. Uh, and then Greg Monroe is the other top-tier free agent still out there. This guy's a really good, finesse big man. I wouldn't really say he's a big bruiser. He can body somebody, but he's more of a finesse player, really good around the blocks, his back to the ba- back to the basket He's got a really good offensive game that way. And he can step out and take a 10, 15-foot jumper anytime. So those are the two best free agents. And um, so let's let's jump into the winners and losers so far of the NBA free agency. And I'm going to start with the... Uh, should we start with the losers or the winners? I say we start with the losers. All right, come. losers, here you come. Uh, so loser from the East will be the Heat because doesn't matter what happens, if you lose LeBron James in free agency, you are a big loser. You just lost about 20 wins off of your record. Sorry. I don't know. LeBron James kind of overrated. Um, Definitely overrated. I've never he could take Michael him. Jordan. Um... I don't think he's a better overall player than Michael Jordan is. But maybe one-on-one, you never know. You never know. He is a little bit taller than Michael was, but Michael was a little bit more savvy than LeBron is, so you never know. It could go either way. I would still, if I had to bet, if you put a gun to the head, said bet on who's going to win, I would bet on Michael Jordan, of course. But you never know. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, I'm just, I'm just saying. Yeah, you never know what's going to happen with the Heat either. Uh, although they were... Like, you know, their big claim to fame and success was buying good players, and they so they bought the best players they could find, and now they lost the best player they could find, <laughs> and they haven't exactly bought <laughs> yeah. up uh, enough to replace them yet. So and we'll they're see. not going to have time, so sorry, Heat. Uh, and then the big loser for the Western Conference was there's a couple big losers because there's a couple teams that I thought should be doing something that just didn't do anything, but I would have to say is the Mavs. Not because they've made that many bad moves. I just think they overpaid for Chandler Parsons like $20 million over what he should have gotten. They gave him a four-year, $47 million, or a three-year, $47 million deal, I believe. The guy should have gotten a $3 million, $27 million deal. So, you know, what can you do? That makes you a loser. Let's go ahead and womp both of them. All right. We can give him a womp. Could we? I don't know, can Maybe. we? Yeah, we can. I like, I like that face. <laughs> That's his womp face right there. <laughs> and so let's move it on to the biggest winners of free agency so far. And I'm going to give the biggest winner uh, in the Eastern Conference to, hmm, can you guess it? If the biggest Washington loser is whoever... Uh, actually, they, they're up there. They would be my second tier <laughs> winner. Um, but if you, could, if you could guess who the biggest loser is because they lost LeBron, let's, hmm. Yeah, it's Cleveland. Because if you get LeBron James, I mean, you just win. That's that's. Just... And then the best winner, biggest winner from the Western Conference will be the San Antonio Spurs because I believe they had about four or five free agents from that championship team, and they went ahead and re-signed them all. So they're returning the exact same championship roster from this year to next year. So I call that a W. That's an interesting one. It's a it's a win because of not because of gain, but because of maintaining. Because you already yeah, well, had the best. Exactly. Players, You're already at the so. top of the mountain. I mean, you can't get any higher than that. So, you know, as long as you can stay up there, you're playing king of the mountain, you're kicking all the other little kids down the hill. You know, you broke one or two of them's nose. That wasn't very nice of you, San Antonio, but you know, you maintain your king of the mountain. I see what you're doing there. Do what you do. And and the other thing about that is they sign these guys for pretty small contracts. I mean, they they didn't overpay for anybody. I don't think they quite... I think they kind of... Actually, you know what? They kind of underpaid, like, 
Tim Duncan. They could have given him a lot more, but eh, you know what? Keep the flexibility going. Can't complain there. So, they yeah. probably had that uh, negotiation uh, point of, hey, we got you. Uh, the system got you a championship, so um, and it's worked for the past seventeen years. Why don't you just stay? And he's like, oh, good, good point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've won five championships. for nice, you know. Yeah, I, I like being the best in the league. Yeah, yeah, you know. So yeah. So tell us what you think about what happened in NBA free agency. Were there any free agents I missed that you think I should have talked more about? Do you give us some of your biggest winners slash losers? Let us know in comments down below. Of course, at words my face on Twitter, words my face at gmail.com, Google Plus, and uh, Facebook. You know, those things. So let us know what you guys think about the NBA free agency. But let's go ahead and move it on to the next topic of the night, and that will be our MLB midseason preview. Or review. Preview would be before. This is after. Yeah. Yeah, so every year... <laughs> so every year, really, the Midsummer Classic, the All-Star Game, is really supposed to represent midseason, but it's always about two weeks after the actual mid-middle of the season, so... But we'll, I'm just going to run down some of the, the divisions, give you who I think is going to win the division, or who the leader of the division is right now, give you a little bit of points. I'm not going to go over all 31 teams that there is in the MLB, because, yeah, we always go late anyway, so... I don't think you guys want us to go four hours late, though. Maybe 17 hours late. 25 and a half hours late. All day, every day, from now on. <laughs> <laughs> we will just keep broadcasting for the next year straight about something that happened. Long time. Yeah, Wouldn't that be weird if we just kept the same topic going? Because people would be <laughs> like, well, lots have changed since, since you guys started talking about it. Why don't you talk about it? No, mm -mm, same topic. We're stuck in the middle of the season, so... Anyone you know, the listen will be an absolute expert on it, <laughs> and we will be the best at talking about it by the end of We it. would have to. I mean, if we could keep the that The definitive going. guide, okay. <laughs> of the 2014 middle of the season. <laughs> just just this part of the year. Not the whole year. Not all NBA, MLB. Just the mid-season. But yeah, so let's start it off. And let's start it off with the NL. So if you don't know what NL means, that is National League for all you out there who want to be in the know. And a lot of you already knew that. But So let's start it off with the Central. Now, on the top of the Central right now is the Brewers. But the Brewers have had a very interesting year. I believe April, they had the best record of any baseball team in April. May, they had a below 500 record. June, I believe again, they had the best record of anybody in baseball. And then started out July with the worst record in baseball. So these guys That's have been... a lot been of fluctuation. That is a lot. I don't, I don't really understand... I, I mean, it, things must be really close for them to be able to go from top to bottom that frequently. Yeah, well, you know, it's... you'd think, it's cause you'd think like, thing. top, like, you might drop down, but you wouldn't think to bottom or near bottom in, in just a month's time or just a couple well, weeks' time. They weren't they weren't dropping, like, to the bottom of their division. They were just, like, total overall record for just the month. So it, it's been... Oh, quite the roller maybe you should have been clear about that, Brian. You confuse me. I think we need to roll back the tape and we'll see how clear I was. Roll back tape. You roll back the tape. <laughs> but, yes. Yeah, so, but, unfortunately, they really can't do this in their division and hope to win because they have another team that's only about one game behind them, the St. Louis Cardinals, um, you know, the team that was runner-up in the World Series last year. Yeah, yeah, I think Boston won last year. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, I see the Cardinals overtaking them by the end of the year because of the inconsistency of Milwaukee. Plus, the Cardinals have a great starting rotation. They have great hitters. I mean, they're they're a stacked team. They've been in the World Series, I want to say, uh, three out of the past five years. So, you know, sorry, I, don't know. I don't know. Cardinals, Cardinals might be starting it. a trend of uh, throwing games by giving... You know, retiring veterans, easy easy throws. <laughs> well, Wainwright, eh, you know, but uh, I don't think he has to play Derek Jeter again unless they meet him in the playoffs. So you know, that's sigh of relief for Cardinals fans. But, uh, but yeah, so let's move it on to the West. And this is a pretty fun matchup to watch because the Dodgers and the Giants are one of the biggest rivalries in at the MLB. I mean, in baseball in general, that's one of the biggest rivalries. I mean, really, if you were going to stack up the rivalry scale... I'd say Redskins versus Cowboys, biggest rivalry in sports. Then you have Ohio State, Michigan. Uh, maybe, maybe above Ohio State, Michigan, you'd have uh, 
uh, New York Yankees and Boston Red Sox. And then right below them is the Dodgers and the Giants. Those two guys, those two teams have been going at each other ever since uh, the Dodgers moved from Brooklyn. So, yeah, I don't think the San Francisco Giants I mean, I like that. they were going at it even while the Dodgers were in Brooklyn, but, you know. I, I don't think the rivalry was quite as big until they moved to in-state. Uh, so I think that's really what really sparked off that rivalry. And that happened like 30, 40 years ago. So it's been mm -hmm. going strong for quite a while. Um, right now the Dodgers are ahead of the Giants, and I think that's going to be kind of how it stays because they have the pitching of uh, – I know these pitchers. Zach Greinke, he's an awesome pitcher, and probably the best pitcher in the game right now, Clayton Kershaw. Uh, so you have those two guys anchoring a rotation that is not a bad rotation. They also have people like Jeff uh, – Jeff – Beckett. Jim, I don't, I don't know what his name is. What is his name? Brendan, what's his name? Beckett. Josh Beckett. I knew it was a J. Damn it. Damn it. Yeah. I'm just going to hang my head in shame for a little bit. So I'm going to talk to you guys with my shame, shame head. That's shame what, head? That doesn't that's sound my, right. shame, my shamed head. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, now I do like San Francisco, but I don't think they quite have enough to overcome what the, the Dodgers have. Uh, so look for them to win, but I do think the Giants are going to make it into the playoffs in one of the wild card spots, so that'll be interesting. And then let's move it over to the East, and now this is a little bit more closer to home because uh, we're here in D.C., so I do get to watch more Nationals games than I do almost anybody else except for Baltimore Oriole games. And uh, the Nats and the Braves uh, going into the All-Star break are actually tied for number one. If you had, if you, if I had to tell you who I think is going to win this division, I would say the Nats because I believe they have the best pitch, starting pitching rotation in all of baseball with Strasburg, Zimmerman, Gio Gonzalez, uh, Doug Fister, and Tanner Rourke. Uh, those guys have been spectacular. I believe they have one of the lowest ERAs for starting rotations, and they also have a really solid bullpen anchored by snubbed closer Rafael Soriano, who should have made it into the All Star game but didn't quite. But then again, you look over at the Atlanta side, those guys have some great hitters. Uh, Freeman, great hitter. Hayward, great hitter. I mean, they can really turn it on when they need to. Uh, and the only thing that I would say would hamper the Nationals is playing the Braves, because it seems like the Braves just always kill them every time they play. So, you They're know. The Kryptonites. They are the kryptonite to the Superman that is the Nationals. So, yeah, we'll see what happens there. But it, it should be a fun race to watch all the way to the end. That'll probably be the closest division race in all of baseball. So keep an eye on them. That'll be fun to watch. So we did the NL. I think it's time for the AL. And let's start it off with the East. And close to my heart, my favorite baseball team, the Baltimore Orioles, they are leading by four games over the Blue Jays. Uh, so I actually think that they do have a good shot at winning the the East this year. Uh, now, one of their worst things about the Orioles is they always seem to really suck the second half of the season, and they've been doing this for a long time. So you never yeah, know. The Yankees are, are going to try to really get Jeter into the playoffs for his last run, so uh, it'll be close. Yeah, but... um. I mean, they haven't done too bad the last few years, and I'm I'm still surprised at how well they've been doing. Like, because I'm just so used to all those years that when we were growing up, uh, the Orioles not doing all that great. Like, mm -hmm. loved them through and through, and just you know, I went to so many of their games. They're that's the team I've seen the most games of. Uh, probably actually, I've probably seen that's probably the team I've seen the most professional games of. Period. In person, yeah. Yeah, uh, in in stadium, um, but yeah, I mean, when I went to see them, most of the time they lost. And <laughs> you still had a good time, but they just didn't. I win. still had a good time. Like every once in a while, they won. But so it's always surprising to me. And after all that time, I'm still just thrilled seeing that them win, seeing them do decently, be real playoff contenders uh, for the last few years now Three, like four years yeah. yeah yeah so and it hasn't worn off like even though they've been at that level for the last few years now um you know it's still just always shocking it's like oh what we're actually winning yes we're not <laughs> horrible sweet finally pulled pulled off <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. So yeah. So and and really, they probably had the best pickup of all time of a free agent by signing Nelson Cruz to an eight million dollar contract. When this guy turned down a fourteen million dollar contract from the Rangers, and he's just gone on to most of this year, he's led the league in home runs and RBIs. So that was an amazing pickup. They also have one of the best bullpens in baseball. So. I looked for them to hopefully not take a nosedive and close out the f- season strong. So, uh, but you never know. This is unpredictable. That's why I love sports. And let's move it on to the central. And in the central, you have the Tigers and the Tigers and the Tigers. Uh, now they are anchored by a starting rotation of Scherzer, Porcello, and Verlander, three of the better pitchers in the American League. Verlander has his fair share of Cy Youngs, and Scherzer, if he keeps pitching the way he is, he will, uh, those, they'll start to mount up. So, uh, did I mention they have a guy named M- Miguel Cabrera? And he is probably nope. the only triple crown threat we've seen in the past 30, 40 years. And if you don't know what the triple crown is, that's when you lead uh, your league in hitting, home runs, and RBIs. It's not a feat that happens very often. So No, Brian. The Triple Crown is a horse racing set of races. Yeah, it is. It is that too. It's nothing to do with baseball, Brian. You. <laughs> <laughs> it just does. It does. I mean, yeah, I think they did steal that term from, from horse racing, but, you know. It's rare. Whatever it is, it's rare in both. So, there you go. And Only then, what's the, what's the guy? I'm trying to, and then Secretary comes out. Wouldn't it be cool if you could? I have no idea what you're saying right now. I think you're crazy. I don't know if you even hear me anymore. Something has happened with my sound, or your sound. Well, everybody, how's it going? I don't know if Brian's still going. I don't know if I'm still going, but this is the type of the show where I just go on my own tangents anyway, despite whatever Brian may or may not be saying. So, in baseball, they throw balls. And then they run bases. Who knows sports? Uh, but yeah, so I, I do think the Tigers are going to pull that out and, and win that division and have a good shot at making the World Series. And then let's finish it off with the last division is the West. And you have a really good battle going with the Athletics, who have the best record in baseball right now, and the Los Angeles <laughs> Angels. Hank a- Anchored, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. I'm still saying the Athletics, they have the worst name in baseball. Yeah, that is. Athletics. That's why they call themselves the A's instead of the Athletics, because they're like, our name sucks, man. Let's abbreviate it to something else. Whoop. Yeah, want their name. That's what you get at the for having such a horrible name. But yeah, so uh, it's gonna be a close race all the way through. I, I think there's only about two or three games separating these two teams. But you do have the MVP candidate. My my pick for MVP so far of the year with Mike Trout. Uh, this kid's phenomenal. He's everything everybody wanted Bryce Harper to be, but isn't because he's better. And he doesn't mouth off? He doesn't and like he doesn't off. mouth off. He keeps his mouth shut. And they also have Albert Pujols, and they have a good starting rotation. So, But the A's pulled off a really crazy trade where they got Jeff Samarja and Cole Hamels from the Cubs, which are two pretty solid starting pitchers for pretty much nothing. So, And they have a guy named Coco Crisp on their, their team. All I know is we talked about this last week. Where is his serial endorsement? Where? Where? Not just serial endorsement. Like they need to. It should be its own serial. There should be the Coco Crisps. <laughs> the Coco Crisps. Not not him endorsing some other cereal. Make a cereal off this guy. All right. Put mm-hmm. him on the front. I will put eat his it. Name there. I'd eat it. You I'll know what? Just because. Right. Yeah, I mean, because we pr- we pitched it. It's so obviously we a chocolatey definitely- one. Yeah, and like, if you'd like to give us money for our idea, Coco Crisp, hit us up. But uh, so, what do you think? Who do you think is going to come out on top in the AL and the NL? Are any of my picks good, or am I just a dummy? Uh, let me know at wordsformyface.com, wordsformyface at gmail.com. Of course, Google Plus, 
comments down below are always appreciated. And Facebook. Hit us up. Let us know what you think. Uh, I'm curious to see what everybody else thinks. So, yeah. And send us your Coco Crisp recipes. Just yes. If you're making it in your house, just send it to us. Yeah, we All want right? those. We want those. Those will be tasty. We'll, we'll make them and eat them on the show. How about that? Ha ha! We'll eat yeah. them on the show. Free plug. I would for, do it. I'll, I'll for do Coco it. Crisp? I'll, I'm going to do it once somebody sends me a recipe. All right. Okay, so but yeah, so let's move it on to the last sp topic of the night. And I have compiled a list of five things that soccer can do to make it an American sport. Because in the pantheon of American sports, soccer probably ranks below golf and tennis and NASCAR, which is pretty low. Now, NASCAR is actually, depending on where you are in the country, can get up there in the ranks. But my consideration of the top sports would be football, basketball, baseball, mm -hmm. hockey, then those other ones in a row, you know. So soccer, you're what, 8 9. If you want to move inch your way back up, I've got some suggestions for you. A few rule tweaks, a few things here and there just to make you a little bit more competitive in American sports uh, viewers. So let's start off with number 1. Get rid of the offsides. I mean, what are you doing? People are like, "Well, then you'd have players cherry picking." Who cares if the offensive players are farther down the field than the defensive players go farther down the field? Then you open up the middle of the field. You don't get stuck staying in the middle of the field. Plus, I bet you you'd have an average of two more goals per game due to the no offsides rule. No, yeah, okay. But then, I mean, other sports do similar. Well, I guess no, because mm -hmm. everyone, no one prevents you from going going forward that much so yeah and and I and I like to compare it to basketball you can cherry pick in basketball you can leave one offensive player down there the whole time if you want and yeah every now and then he will get a long pass to him but I bet you what would happen more is that since you only have four players back on defense you get screwed more than you would, yeah, would help it just so. changes what what you consider for your strategy like do you exactly. think your defense can deal with it or do you and or do you think that in is it worth it or not, whatever. Although but it would in, definitely in soccer, a lot I would more see it. Yeah, in soccer, I would see it though. Probably they wouldn't try and, and send it down the field. Like the whole idea, the concern about cherry picking doesn't seem as big a deal as it was in like basketball, because you have a goalkeeper still down there. Yeah, you know. I mean, like, but, if, but if you see one offensive player down there, you're going to have another defensive player down there with them. Again, you open up the middle of the field, you create more flow back yeah. and forth. It gets a little more exciting, and uh, Americans would watch it more. And you probably wouldn't have these stupid zero-zero games. Yeah, I think I you might still have those zero-zero games, but eh, you might. But it'd be more rare. So that's one thing. Let's move it on to number two, and that is abolish the tie. I mean, just get rid of it already because. You have a good way to end the games. Your overtime structure is pretty cool. I like the two overtime halves. And then your shootout, that's one of the most exciting things in your sport. Why hide it away for only tournaments? Uh, I mean, push it out there. Hockey, they got a big boost when they abolished the tie. Uh, after one overtime, you go straight to the, the shootout. So that is a lot more fun. It makes it a lot more competitive. You really get to separate the good teams from the bad teams because a lot of the times in soccer – you'll have whoever the home team is just play defense want to go for the tie because the other team coming in is way better and they're crappy, and then you have a 0-0 game, and it's no fun to watch. Yeah. Plus, ties are like kissing your sister. doesn't count. And we've talked about this before, that some of those biggest, bigger sports in um, the U.S. have ties as well, but they happen so rarely because of the structure of the games, like football, can have a tie. It can. Yeah, it doesn't it happen does. often, though. But it, also, they don't have 0-0 zero, zero games going into the overtime, usually. It's usually they've scored yeah, a couple times well, each just time. how things work out. It, they, it's very rare to get a tie. It's very rare to get 0-0 zero, zero games. It's not the same as what's going on in, in soccer, for instance. Um, basketball, like, it, it's difficult to get uh, a game tied up. Like, that... Well, going I mean, they keep happens, going in overtime and overtime and overtime. Yeah. They won't end a game in a tie in basketball, ever. Yeah. They'll just keep playing until someone wins. So, I mean, again, it makes it more exciting, in my opinion. It makes you feel more uh, more of a conclusive result. And people just like to see that more. So, yeah, get rid of that tie. 
Let's go on to number four. And this is one that I think would really just improve the pace of play with the game. Allow more than three substitute per game. Because in soccer, all you get to do is each side has three substitutes. Doesn't matter if you go into overtime, if you go into shootouts, doesn't matter. You only get three total uh, substitutions per game. If you make it like five to six substitutions per game, yeah, maybe it slows down the play a little bit. But what it's going to do is it's going to keep the players fresher on the field. You're going to see more exciting plays all throughout the game, not not just in you know the beginning couple minutes and then the end couple minutes. It's going to make it more exciting, and it would allow the coaches to use a little bit more strategy. Uh, one of the things that you don't get is you don't get these coaches – like you do in basketball or football, they get to talk to their players more. They get to say, hey, I see this is happening right now. Go out there and do this to counteract it. You get a, you get a lot of that, especially in football, the way they substitute in between plays sometimes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it really would be more of a back and forth. And I just think it would be make the game a lot more interesting. Yeah. So. And it also just adds another event to happen during the game. I would say, you know, because... Big soccer fans, they understand what's going on. They like the flow of the game and watching the flow of the game, even when nothing's going on. But for if you want to appeal to a wider audience, you have to you have to break up that just back and forth and have something yeah, but going on. Even the substitutions wouldn't really break up that flow because they don't really stop it too much to I get know. the That's substitutions. That's what I'm saying. Like you have to have some event happening, good. like something that shows, yeah, something other than just going back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> And so that brings us on to number five, which actually is very, very closely related, and that is give each team a timeout per half. There are no timeouts in soccer, as far as I'm aware of. All The only time you really stop play is when somebody falls down. Yeah, did I, did I skip number th- three? Probably. I did skip number three, didn't I? Yeah. So, if you'd like to teach me how to count, hit me up at Words My Face on Twitter. I did skip number three, but we'll go with number five right now, and then I'll go back to number three. So, that is give each team a timeout. It'll really improve, again, like I said with the substitutions. It'll help improve strategy. It'll give people a little bit of a, a break in between. So, you know, each team gets know. one timeout. It can only be 30 seconds to a minute. Really will not impede play that much. Maybe they could catch the clock up properly instead of having to go to stoppage time every half. And I, I think it might make it a little more interesting. Plus, us Americans, we need our pee and snack breaks. We need them. You don't See, get I don't enough. know about this one. And this is, this is one I don't know if it would really help that much because I think that the no timeout time... Like, yeah, you don't get to go up and, and get up and pee as much and all that stuff, but the no timeout rule helps it keeps the game going and flowing. Like one of the one of the complaints that is sometimes raised about some of the bigger American sports is how, especially towards the end, you know, the last minute drags out to five minutes, well, whatever. Especially it is. in basketball, the last thirty seconds can take you like thirty minutes. That is true. And I'm not saying give them a lot of timeouts, just one timeout. Each team per half. No, Minute I, timeout. I do kind That's of admire it. that these guys are, are running back and forth for that long. Nah, they're um, not all running break. back and forth. Half the time they're standing there, please. All right, right but they're in play. That. Like they, they have to keep on their toes. I, they do. I, I, I kind of like that they don't have timeouts. It, it does add something, um, some integrity to the game that is not seen, something different that is not seen that I think does keep the excitement up. Like I understand the, yeah, we want to get a break, and it does make it very different from, from football, for instance, where, you know, there's a break every few seconds. Yeah, but <laughs> still, football is a little more physical. I'd like to see soccer players be able to run up and down the field when they're getting hit every single play. I mean, when you get hit, the wind... All right, we're not getting into that right now. We're not... That's... We, we're we <laughs> okay. almost at our 50-minute mark, and I do not want to go into 10 days. So... <laughs> but, yeah, so... As 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 I've taught you how to count, here at Words My Face Counting, it goes 1, 2, 4, 5, 3. So, number 3 <laughs> will be... Um, cut down on the flopping. Aaron Robin. Um, it really is embarrassing to see people constantly falling on the ground, flying through the air, holding their knee, crying like little babies on the ground, and then they show a replay, and you weren't even touched. I'm tired of seeing it. Cut it out. Now, other sports do flopping. Basketball, there's flopping in there. But those guys get fined five to $10,000 if they're, if it's an egregious flop. So find some people, cut it down. I mean, every now and then, all right, uh, whatever. 
but it, it's just ridiculous. I mean, who was that guy? Schweinsteiger, I believe, from Germany, extended the World Cup by like four minutes just because he kept flopping at the end. I mean, literally, the, the announcers even said it. They're like, oh, someone's down. We don't even have to look. It's Schweinsteiger. Oh, wait, it was Schweinsteiger. You know, it's just ridiculous. I'm tired mm. of seeing these soccer players crying on the ground and nothing's happened. And that is something that I think that the entire world is a little sick of. Um, it is because of how it helps the competitive edge. It's kind of accepted um, that that's what happens, but no one really likes it. No one yeah, does. It's it's kind of it just takes away a lot of the athletic sporting uh, yeah. part of Although, it. Although to so some extent, just... you gotta you gotta question like, what are you gonna do about it? That's this is the the you're players find, doing it. Like I said, you're gonna find them. Yeah, just like you can find them. But if but once it gets to something like the World Cup, if like those players don't care, like you find them all all day long. Um, I'm sure if they started seeing ten thousand dollars come out of their pockets, yeah, that's like toilet paper to some of those guys. But once they start seeing that money coming out of their accounts on a consistent basis, I'm pretty sure it'll slow them down. Yeah, well, it, it might at least slow them down for for like club play or you know out at the you know U.S. league level, which is what we would really want are talking about increasing popularity for. So, yeah, that yeah. might. Yeah, so I do something. But yeah. Oh, and I'm gonna throw in a number six because I just thought about this on the fly. Uh, the the final thing that soccer can do to make Americans love it more is go ahead and have the world accept that it is soccer and not football. <laughs> it is soccer. Let's just go ahead and throw football only to us. We don't need to say American football anymore. It's just football, and then the rest of the world accept that you're playing soccer. You're not playing football. You're playing soccer. That was my, the way to really make that one things happen. Turn into six. You know the real way to make that one happen. America take Chewbacca over the world. Chewbacca chains. That is that is the solution. If, as long as I can get Chewy behind this initiative, I think it'll happen within minutes. Minutes. I mean, once he once he just sets his mind on something, things change. So, but yeah. So that was my turned out to be six ways to change soccer. If you have any ideas of ways that we could change soccer to make Americans like it a little bit more, or you just think my ideas were stupid, uh, let us know. Comments down below, at Words for My Face on Twitter, Words for My Face at gmail.com, of course, Google+, and Facebook. So hit us up, let us know what you think. But, yep, so our 30-minute show turned into our 50-minute show like it always does every single episode. And uh, I think that's about it. What do you think, Brendan? I you don't think want to go on a marathon? Say. Uh, there is more to say. We could we could keep going. There is no more to say. Okay, no more to say. Because I will not allow it. And it's funny right now. His camera is kind of doing that like dubbed over Chinese movie stuff, where I hear the words and then his mouth moves. So <laughs> I hope this. I actually want everybody else to see it that way too, because it's actually been pretty entertaining for me for the past five minutes. But uh, yeah, as always, I'm Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire Brendan. You. And we are going to headbang our way out this joint. We are going to headbang our way out of this joint. Huh? Oh, man, I love our song. All right, good night, everybody. If I can find the broadcast, stop broadcast. There we go.